along the side of the rim, feet are still pointing toward the goal and under your shoulders. Notice that proper training involves paying attention to three distinct phases of your shot before you shoot. Ready and set. Check your hands, feet, and body position. During your shot, fire. Try to catch the goal between your arms and time the release of the ball with your feet coming off the ground. After you shoot, pose and check your sights. Go between extended arms, floppy shooting hand on the shot line above the goal, and your feet balanced and square. Chapter 2, How to Build Your Footwork, Step by Step. Look at Chapter 2 as a continuation of Chapter 1, because shot form without the footwork is only half of the picture. This chapter will separate you from being a stationary target shooter to a player who can shoot real game shots from every angle, on the move, and off the dribble. And notice throughout this chapter, that you will always finish your footwork with your feet landing under your shoulders square to the go. In other words, even off the move, your shot will always start and finish with your body in the same position you learned in Chapter 1. Game shooting becomes just a matter of one habit, your footwork, leading into another habit, your shot motion. 1. Step up square. Begin in your set position facing the go. Step back with your right foot, step up and fire. Stay low and stay set while you step back and up. You're training your right foot to always land in the same place, squarely under your right shoulder. Game application. If you're catching the pass in an open stance, then you'll have to step up to shoot. This might happen even with a skip pass. Now, stepping up can increase your vertical, so don't be surprised if you get a little more lift on the ball when you step up. Two, step up square. Repeat the same thing, but step back with your left foot. Set, step back, step up, and train your left foot to always land squarely under your left shoulder. Game application. The game applications are the same as before, but now you can step up from either side of the floor with either foot. Three, one, two, dribble. Step back with your right foot, put down one dribble with your right hand, step up and shoot. Time the dribble hitting the floor with your foot landing behind you. Put the dribble straight down so that you can keep your eyes on the goal. When you step up, your right foot should land squarely under your right shoulder. Game application. This is the last step and last dribble when a right-hander is shooting off the dribble, going right, and using one-two footwork. Additional notes. Pretend that your left foot, the one that's not moving in this drill, has already put on the brakes to stop your momentum. All that's left is the last dribble and a step up. This is the quickest way to shoot off the dribble, so I highly recommend mastering it. Rick Barry, the only player to lead the NCAA, ABA, and NBA in scoring, recommends that you reach down with this final dribble in order to pick it up even sooner. If you're right-handed and dribbling right, then you can ride the momentum of the dribble straight up your shot line. All the left hand does is pick up the ball and guide it along your shot line. This step and any others that have a dribble in them are meant to train your eyes as well as your feet. Don't watch the ball when you put down the dribble. This will train your eyes to locate the goal as early as possible. The longer your eyes are on your target, the greater your accuracy. Four, one, two, dribble. Step back with your left foot, put down one dribble with your left hand, Step up and shoot. Time the dribble hitting the floor with your foot landing behind you. When you step up, your left foot should land squarely under your left shoulder. However, dribbling with your offhand means the ball is nowhere near your shot line. 
Therefore, after the dribble, the offhand turns to the side in order to pick up and move the ball over to the shot line. This allows your shooting hand to stay on your shot line. And you should know by now that starting your shot motion with the ball on your shot line will increase your accuracy. The alternative is to reach over with both hands, pick up the dribble, move everything back to the shot line, and then shoot. But this is slower because of how far your shooting hand must travel, less accurate because your shooting hand is off the shot line, and most importantly, lacks any deception. Instead, practice this quick, weak hand pickup move until it looks like a quick draw. The great thing is you can practice it anytime and anywhere without looking at the ball and without even taking a shot. You can get in a lot of reps in a short period of time. Game application. The game application is the same as before. You're practicing the last step and dribble when shooting off the bounce, this time going left. Five, pivot square up. Point your left shoulder at the go, step with your left foot, and dribble with your right hand at the same time. With your left toes in the air, pivot on your left heel and square up to the goal. Dipping your left or inside shoulder can assist you in making the pivot and landing square. And that's the most important part of this movement, to pivot and square up without overstepping or understepping. Game application. This is your shot motion when shooting off the dribble but moving at an angle to the goal. Steve Alford, one of the greatest shooters of all time, said that he believes the pivot square up is the single most important skill to learn for shooting in a game. I tend to agree. Six, pivot square up. Point your right shoulder at the goal, step with your right foot, and dribble with your left hand at the same time. Pivot on your right heel and square up to the goal. Dipping your right or inside shoulder can assist you in making the pivot and landing square. Note of caution. If your left hand is your non-shooting hand, then you'll have a tendency to understep and not get completely square. Mark my words, if you miss going to your weak hand, most of the time it's because of an understep and the miss will either be short or to the left of the goal. Game application. The game application is the same as before. You're shooting off the dribble, going left, and at an angle. Seven, two foot hop. Facing the go, step forward and jump off your left foot, catch the pass, and land on both feet. Without pause, explode into your shot. Time the pass hitting your hands with your feet hitting the ground. It doesn't have to be a big hop, just enough to load your legs. If you're by yourself, spin yourself a pass. Game application. Catching in a small hop in certain situations speeds up your shot preparation and allows you to get off your shot as quickly as possible. Some circumstances where this occurs in a game would be receiving a skip pass on the weak side, receiving a pass from the post, or receiving a pass from dribble penetration. In addition, when running at full speed or dribbling at full speed, it's necessary to stop yourself with two feet rather than putting on the brakes with one. And I want your feet to be prepared for shooting in all situations. Eight, two foot hop. Facing the goal, step with and jump off your right foot and catch the pass while landing on both feet. Without pause, explode into your shot. Time the pass hitting your hands with your feet hitting the ground. It doesn't have to be a big hop, just enough to load your legs with vertical energy. If you're by yourself, spin yourself a pass. Game application. The game application is the same as before. You must be comfortable leaving the ground off either leg. Nine, square in the air. Line your shoulders up with the shot line. Left shoulder pointing to the go. Take one step with your inside foot, the left foot. Leave the ground, get square to the goal in the air, catch and shoot. If you're by yourself, spin yourself a pass. Game application. 
you might be coming off a screen, 